in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the solemnity of St. Peter and Paul. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Peace to, to the people, people of, of goodwill. Good will. We, we praise, praise you, we, we bless, bless you, we, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Let us pray. O God, who on the solemnity of the Apostle Peter and Paul Give us the noble and holy joy of this day. Grant, we pray, that your church may in all things follow the teaching of those through whom she received the beginnings of right religion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. About that time, King Herod laid violent hands upon some who belonged to the church. He had James, the brother of John, killed with a sword. After he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. This was during the festival of a living bread. When he had seized him, he put him in prison and handed him over to four squads of soldiers to guard him, intending to bring him out to the people after the Passover. While Peter was kept in prison, the church prayed fervently to God for him. The very night before Herod was going to bring him out, Peter bound with two chains, was sleeping between two soldiers, while guards in front of the door were keeping watch over the prison. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord 
appeared and a light shined in the cell. He tapped Peter on the side and woke him, saying, Get up quickly. And the chains fell off his wrist. The angel said to him, Fasten your belt and put on your sandals. He did so. Then he said to him, Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. Peter went out and followed him. He did not realize that what was happening with the angels' help was real. He thought he was seeing a vision. After they had passed the first and the second guard, they came before the iron gate leading into the city. It opened for them of its own accord, and they went outside and walked along a lane when suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I am sure that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from the hands of Herod and from all those and from all that the Jewish people were expecting. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be always in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. Look to him, that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces may not bloss with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress he saved him. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. As for me, I am already being poured out as libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept my, the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus came 
into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, when we have a dog in our house, the dog knows everybody in the house. If a stranger comes near or enters the house, our dog will bark because it doesn't recognize the stranger. Maybe he thinks that the stranger is a robber or someone who will do something bad, something bad for the family. So the dog will bark and run after the stranger until the dog cannot see him anymore. He barks and runs until he got tired because he wants to make sure that the house and the entire family are safe. At the same time, the dogs of our neighbors, they don't see the stranger, but they will bark as well because they heard our dogs barking. Our dog and the dogs of our neighbors, they bark together. They will all get tired. But here's the difference. Our dog knows very well why he got tired. It is to protect the house and the whole family. While the other dogs, they don't know why. They only imitate our dog's barking. Why am I telling you this story? Jesus asked a question to the apostles, who do you say that I am? Yes, this is a question to the disciples in the foot of Mount Hermon, a place called Caesarea Philippi, 2,000 years ago. But now Jesus asked us also, who do you say that I am? If we cannot answer this question personally, we are like the dogs of the neighbors. We will get tired, even will get bored of routine prayers and liturgy, of daily and weekly masses. We will get tired without knowing why. Why do we have to have daily prayers? Why do we have to come to the mass? To the confession. In some places, why do we have to suffer because of our faith? If we don't know how to answer Jesus' question personally, we will lose our faith easily. We have to learn from two great apostles. We celebrate their solemnity today, Peter and Paul. They knew very well whom they follow. That's why nothing can stop them from proclaiming their faith to Jesus. Peter and Paul encountered Jesus in very different ways. 
Peter was fishing in the Lake of Galilee, Paul was persecuting Christians. But both encounters were so powerful that they led these two men to surrender their lives to Jesus and to follow him on a lifelong journey. They proclaimed their faith until the last drop of their blood. And they did this because they really know who Jesus is for them. Now the question of Jesus is forwarded to us and we have to answer it personally. The Lord calls out to each of us today as he called Peter and Paul. He wants to work through us, through our daily activities, our daily responsibilities, our daily difficulties as he worked through St. Peter and St. Paul. Each of us has a unique contribution to make the coming of the Lord's kingdom. In our efforts to respond to this calling, St. Peter and St. Paul can continue to be our inspiration. Let us proclaim together our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Song number four.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the prayer of the apostles, O Lord, accompany the sacrif sacrificial gift that we present to your name for consecration, and may their intercession make us devoted to you in celebration of the sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for by your providence, the blessed apostles Peter and Paul bring us joy. Peter, foremost in confessing the faith, Paul, its outstanding preacher. Peter, who established the early church for the remnant of Israel, Paul, master and teacher of the Gentiles that you call. And so it's in a different way, gathered together, the one family of Christ, and revered together throughout the world. They share one martyr's crown. And therefore, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it to and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Pierre Battista, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Eugenio Verano, father of Sister Vilina, whom you have called yesterday from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, all we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Peter and Paul, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. In the name of God, you, you take, take away the sins, the sins of, the of the world. Have mercy on us. us. In the name of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. In the name of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Be
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that, that you should, should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and, and my soul shall be healed. to the seashore, neither are searching for the rich nor the wise, desiring only that I should follow. Possessions in my boat, you find no power, no wealth. Will you accept them, my nets and labor? Oh Lord, with your eyes set upon. Smiling, you have spoken my name. All I long for, I have found by the water. At your side, I will seek other shores. Take my hands and direct them. Help me spend myself in seeking the lost. Return in love for the love you gave me. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, who have been renewed by this sacrament, so to live in the church that persevering in the breaking of the bread, 
and in the teaching of the apostles, we may be one heart and one soul, made steadfast in your love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Song number nine. Mother of mercy and of love.